World History Patterns of Interaction Chapter 19, Section 1 Europeans Explore the East Before you read, in the last chapter, you read about empire building in Asia. In this section, you will learn why and how Europeans began an age of exploration. For God, Glory, and Gold Why did Europeans begin to explore new lands? For many centuries, Europeans did not have much contact with people from other lands. That changed in the 1400s. Europeans hoped to gain new sources of wealth. By exploring the seas, traders hoped to find new, faster routes to Asia, the source of spices and luxury goods. Another reason for exploration was spreading Christianity to new lands. Bartolomeu Dias, an early Portuguese explorer, explained his motives. To serve God and His Majesty, to give light to those who were in darkness, and to grow rich as all men desire to do. Advances in technology made these voyages possible. A new kind of ship, the caravel, was stronger than earlier ships. It had triangle-shaped sails that allowed it to sail against the wind. Ships could now travel far out into the ocean. The magnetic compass allowed sea captains to stay on course better. Question 1. What were the two main reasons for European exploration? Portugal leads the way. Spain also makes claims. How did Portugal lead the way in exploration? The first nation to develop and use the caravel and the magnetic compass was Portugal. Prince Henry was committed to the idea of exploring. In 1419, he started a school of navigation. Sea captains, map makers, and navigators met and exchanged ideas there. Over the next few decades, Portuguese captains sailed farther and farther down the west coast of Africa. In 1488, Bartolomeu Dias reached the southern tip of Africa. Ten years later, Vasco da Gama led a ship around Africa to India and back. The Portuguese had found a sea route to Asia. The Spanish, meanwhile, had plans of their own. Christopher Columbus convinced the king and queen that he could reach Asia by sailing west. In 1492, instead of landing in Asia, Columbus touched land in the islands of the Americas. Spain and Portugal argued over which nation had the rights to the land that Columbus had claimed. In 1494, they signed the Treaty of Tordesillas. It divided the world into two areas. Portugal won the right to control the eastern parts, including Africa, India, and other parts of Asia. Spain got the western parts, including most of the Americas. Question 2. How did Spain and Portugal solve their differences over claims to new lands? Trading Empires in the Indian Ocean Who established trading empires in the Indian Ocean? Portugal moved quickly to make the new Indian Ocean route pay off. Through military might, Portugal gained power over islands that were rich in desirable spices. They were called the Spice Islands. Spices now cost Europeans one-fifth of what they had cost before, while still making Portugal very wealthy. Other European nations joined in this trade. In the 1600s, the English and Dutch entered the East Indies. They quickly broke Portuguese power in the area. Then both nations set up an East India Company to control Asian trade. These companies were more than businesses. They were like governments. They had the power to make money, sign treaties, and raise their own armies. The Dutch East India Company was richer and more powerful than England's company. By 1700, the Dutch ruled much of Indonesia. They had trading posts in many other Asian countries and commanded the southern tip of Africa. At the same time, both England and France 
finally gained footholds in India. Nevertheless, even though Europeans controlled the trade between Asia and Europe, they had little impact on most people living in these areas. Question 3. How did the Dutch and English become